unpacking racial profiling. Um, because I think uh, the way in which we see people and the way in which we engage with people usually starts by appearance. I mean, if we look around the room, uh, we see people who look different, who dress differently. And I specifically wore my jeans today uh, and not dressed up so that uh, I could present myself as a scientist uh, and not like a person going to some party or whatever. But this is how I dress normally. Um, I, I also uh, spent a week in Ethiopia last week attending a, con a, a, a meeting, but it was also quite an epic uh, journey because I finally got to visit Lucy, the fossil that was discovered in the Afa region. Um, and the reason I share the story is um, after the meeting I stayed on to do some tourism but also to engage with some local scientists and offered to give a talk on, on genetic variation in Africa and on some ethical issues that I've also now become involved with. And one of the students that hosted me and took me around on Thursday, Mulu, uh, started to ask me questions like, are you Indian? And I said, yes. And she says, uh, have you been to India? And I said, no. Uh, Did you speak Indian? And I said, do, you mean, do I speak an Indian language? And I said, well, coming from South Africa, I'm fourth generation South African, and I speak English mainly, but I had to learn Afrikaans. I was raised in Durban, so I speak a little bit of Zulu. And when my mother and her sisters wanted to speak, they talked in Hindi so that we wouldn't understand. So I very quickly learned a few words of Hindi just to have my ear peeled to the gossip. So, um, when you ask if I'm Indian, oh, and then she asked, and do you cook and like Indian food? Because, you know, Ethiopian food is really exotic. And I said, yes, I consider myself a very good cook. And yes, I do cook Indian food. She was very confused. She went home and she said to her mother, whom I met uh, on my, the night before I left, and she said, Mom, this is my friend Himna that I've been talking to you about. And even my mother is very confused how you identify as being Indian when you never dress like an Indian, you don't uh, haven't been to India, you don't speak your language. So ladies and gentlemen, this is how appearance and reality really strikes us. People make assumptions about others, and I thank Professor Zondi for introducing the concepts of other and othering, because Pretty much as a social uh, uh, network of various uh, ethnic groups, etc., we very quickly uh, have cloned the gene for othering. There's us and the others. You name the context, and we're very, very good at the concept of othering. But now, when a baby is born, Oh, we go through that gaga moment. Uh, we coo and we woo and we, we feel that warm sensation. You know, children bring that sense of excitement and joy in our lives. And when you see children together, they are uninhibited. They engage. They may look different, but you know what? Baby talk is a common language. There's no such differences. And at which point in their lives do they become introduced to the othering concepts we've talked about? We have to name them because the law dictates we do it. Uh, we have to register the birth because, again, the law dictates we do it. And so before the child has even become engaged into societal issues, he or she has a name, has an identity number, and becomes an entity of some country. And I always come back to this because, you know, from our own, you think of your own journey, growing up as a kid, who you've met, who's shaped, con contributed to shaping the way you view the world, etc. Many, many things come into our parts. And before you know it, we have this claim of descent. Several types of terminology uh, are introduced for us to uh, identify with our past. 
our ancestors, our lineage, our bloodline. We've heard that. The last question by Debbie uh, kind of raised that, that uh, kind of response. Um, pure bloodlines. Ladies and gentlemen, by the end of this talk, you'll be convinced there is no such thing as a pure race, as a homogeneous population. Remember, I'm a geneticist. We talk about homogeneous, heterogeneous, and so on. There is no such thing as a pure population, and you'll see why. So, even before we know it, knowing our family unit, we are introduced to kinship, to nuclear families, extended families, and so on. And eventually, we're part of the global network. Those young babies eventually grow up. And now, they have been shaped by many, many things. We have the way in which we perceive ourselves, the way in which we perceive others. We become conscious of appearance. Uh, appearance is used as an index of your mate choice. And several things you want to talk about in the social context can be spoken to just using this slide. And last night, at late at the night when I put my slides together, I have a brother who lives in the US. And so I just sent the slides to him because I wanted to sound him out on a few things. Because we talk about he's, uh, he's now in the US for 20 years. And as a person of this color living in Texas, he was also subjected to many, many incidences where people would look at him, uh, you know, all kinds of political things are happening in the world. And here's a brown person in the US who speaks funny. And uh, so people ask questions. And originally, he, he really struggled to get into the social norms until he joined a salsa class. And, and, and he's, unlike his sister, uh, he is a good dancer. And, and this allowed him to get into the social network, made many, many friends. And he says to me that in, in the salsa dance scene, people are much, much more accepting than the West Coast swing, which he also did. Same state, different groups of people, and different degrees of acceptance. So again, there's a lot that's going on in the social context in a way in which people perceive others. Now, uh, this is a short biology class. I want you, as I go through the sequence of four pictures, to identify which race group I'm talking about. So, so this is a skeleton of a human individual, and I mean, many of us remember the days when anthropometrics, measurements, etc., was the science of the day. Uh, the tool kit used by measuring people became a vital way, or, or an important way, of classifying individuals. In terms of skelet skeletons, we have Heritage, uh, the cradle of humankind, you know, literally 60 k's or some other way from here. So skeletons have played a robust uh, place in our lives, and without it, you'd just be like a flop, flop ball. So don't forget, uh, pay attention, mark all the racial features that you're going to use in your classification.